into every lesson. And I'm really excited about this. Uh, I, I had an opportunity to meet Brandon. Uh, I guess it, maybe it was right before the uh, Christmas holidays. And um, my boss, Michelle Dietrich, introduced me to him. And he and I got to talking. And he has a great website that's full of these personal development, personal growth uh, resources that are very popular. They're very popular kind of best-selling books. And um, I know I've taken advantage of, of some books like that. And I just uh, started thinking like, these are not resources that uh, students in our program really get to avail themselves of because they're typically written at such a high level. But Brandon and his uh, website have made them more accessible and he's agreed to share some of them today. And so that's what this webinar is gonna be about is how is what resources he shared and how you might be able to use them in uh, your lessons. I think I think it's it's really exciting. I'm really excited about it. And I think you're going to see a lot of possibilities. Uh, just a little of the housekeeping uh, notes. We are recording this webinar. So uh, next week we will be sending out a follow-up email. That email will have a link to the webinar recording. It'll have this uh, a link to the slideshow. Uh, so all of the slides, you'll have access to that. We like to do a little webinar summary sheet that has kind of the main points, important resources that get shared in the chat and what have you. Um, we'll send that out, a uh, transcript of the chat and the Q&A, and everybody that attends will get a certificate for attending. A little bit about the controls and how we're going to use them today. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the chat for introducing ourselves. If uh, we have links, uh, Brandon and I, as we're talking, uh, we'll post links to different things in the chat. Uh, you out there in the audience, if you have links or resources you want to share or questions that you want to ask of another uh, uh participant, you can post those in the chat. Um, we'll have a transcript of that that we'll share uh, next week. We're going to ask that if you have a question about the presentation, so the uh, insider school resources, questions specifically about how you might use those resources, we're going to ask you to put, use the Q&A function down on the bottom and type that question in. And the reason that we ask you to do that is the chat is kind of a scrolling conversation and it's very easy for us to miss people's questions. So if you put it in the Q&A, we can make sure that everybody's question uh, gets answered. And we are planning on leaving lots of time for people's questions to get answered. But if we get to the top of the hour and we see that there's still a lot more questions, I think Brandon has agreed to uh, stay on a little bit of extra time and we'll make sure that all of those questions get answered, recorded, and you'll hear the answers to all of those questions when we send out the recording. So even if you have to get off at the top of the hour. Okay, I think that's enough housekeeping. So what I would like to do is turn things over to Brandon Hakeem, who is the founder of the Insider School and just let him tell a little bit about him about himself, about the Insider School, what it is, and um, about his kind of connection to uh, literacy and what we do. Brandon? Thank you so much, Todd, and, and thank you. I'm so excited to connect with, uh, with everybody here. And I just wanted to share a little bit about my story and, and how this came to be and, and truthfully share it in a way and share some things that I've never really shared uh, totally before. Um, for me, all of this started when I was in college. I actually went to the dean of my university and I said, I feel like we're getting an outdated education. And I didn't do it because I was trying to, you know, say, hey, I got you or, or anything like that. I really, I was 19 years old and I was hoping that she would tell me what I wasn't seeing right. And her answer was, we're working on it. And then she went on to say how she also feels frustrated with her kids who are in uh, high school and middle school and said that the problem isn't the school, it's the education system. 
And what I thought to myself, I remember I walked out of her office and I just felt a sense of mission where I'm like, okay, if, if she's going to tell me this, I'm going to believe her. And uh, that's when I started reading books. And for me, one book, one book turned to two, two turned into four, four eventually into over a thousand books. And it, it's been an amazing journey being able to learn so many things from so many people. Um, but then th this is the part that I, that I haven't really shared before. Something really interesting happened. I remember I was once, I found a, a, a folder uh, in my desk and I, I hadn't seen this folder in a year. So I opened it up and I saw some of the goals that I'd written for myself um, from years before, five years, six years before I had them all in this folder. So I opened up the folder and I take a look at it and I see that the goals that I had written down then are basically exactly the same as what I had written down, you know, in, in the present day at that time. And it was one of the scares of my life. I'm like, you know, I'm wanting to grow and move forward and all of these things. And um, what's missing? And if I don't change something, I don't want to be in the same position in 10 years and be in the same situation. So something really interesting happens. And this is where it really ties to reading for me and why everything that we're about to cover uh, together on this uh, call uh, is going to make more sense of why insider school is set up the way it is. Uh, I was talking to my mentor about this. I said, what do I do? And he said, do you remember when you were running that restaurant right out of college? What did you learn? And I remembered the story of, I was 22 years old. I was right out of college and I was running a restaurant. I was managing people that were, you know, 10, 20, 30 years older than I was. And there was one person that uh, I had hired when, you know, when I first started, he was amazing, but over time, just his heart wasn't there anymore. And customers were complaining, he had bad attitude, he'd show up late, all these things. Um, but I really loved him and he'd given me so much and, and us so much. And I'm just like, how do I go about the situation? Like, how do I have this very difficult conversation to, uh, you know, to let him know that, hey, this isn't working anymore. Um, I didn't know what to do. I was feeling crazy nervous. Like my whole body was shaking and I had this idea. I went to the library and I found a book called Difficult Conversations. I read it in one sitting and it talked about a three-step framework on how to have a difficult conversation. So I just literally, I took the framework word for word and I had a conversation with them later that day when I went to work. And uh, it was one of the most heartfelt, beautiful conversations I've ever had. He quit but in a very loving way, thanked me for the opportunity and gave me a hug. And I was like, wow, that was very, very easy because I took something from somebody that had already figured out the answer to what I was looking for and just used it. I didn't try to figure it out myself. And um, that's when I realized, you know, the whole idea of insider school is that success in anything is kind of like a ladder. And there are always people higher up that ladder that have the answers to the things that are keeping us stuck. Like anything that we're struggling with right now has already been mastered and written about in a book. And the other realization was that a single idea can change everything. It's not about, you know, collecting as much information as possible in that traditional education model, kind of like I was going through in college. It's a lot more about, okay, what am I struggling with right now? And where can I find the answer in what book? And then how can I take that in a simple way and actually apply it? So what we're going to cover today and what you'll see and what Insider School is all about is taking the wisdom in books, but making it very accessible and actionable and simple. And every video that we cover isn't about 20 or 30 ideas of a book. It's not about cramming as much information into someone's brain. It's about saying, you know what, you may be feeling stuck in this area. Here's a simple, practical solution from someone who's already figured out the answer. And so, so that's my story about how all of this came to be. And just the last thing I'll share is how this call came to be. Why are we doing this with pro literacy and wanting to make this available? And for me, I, I had somebody who uh, is part of my membership and we became friends and we were talking once and he told me that he couldn't read until he was in seventh grade. And, and I couldn't believe that. It didn't make any sense to me. I, I didn't know that was a thing. I'm like, how, how did that happen? And he just, he, he opened my eyes to this, you know, what, what's going on and, 
how many people have uh, you know trouble reading or didn't have the proper education or training or uh, have lower literacy skills or whatever the case and it opened my eyes to what we can do uh, you know taking these books and making them accessible to folks who otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to do that and um, one thing that was very very cool for me and I, I think this is the last thing I'll share about this is I, I remember when I first started this membership I covered a book called Measure What Matters. It's written by John Dewar. He's a venture capitalist, you know, invested in Google and a lot of these type of companies. And it was about his goal setting system um, that he trained Google on, the Gates Foundation, you know, Bono, things like that. And uh, I was at a uh, kind of like a, a talk once, and this this nine year old kid comes up to me, and he's like, "Oh my God, I, I watch your videos every day," and and. I was very confused because I'm, you know, I wasn't trying to make these videos for, for children. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, I watch it with my dad every day. I love it. And I still didn't believe him. And I said, I said, uh, okay, wh what's, what's your favorite concept? He's like, oh, I love the Alice principle from measure what matters. I'm like, I still didn't believe him. I said, what is the Alice principle? And he walked me through the analogy that I use, because I always try to teach through analogy and stories and things like that to make it accessible to anybody. And he's like, oh, you know, it's like Alice, uh, Alice in Wonderland. And she's walking through the woods. She wants to get to the lake, but she needs to find certain milestones along the way. So she needs to see the oak tree, the cabin and the eagle's nest and kind of the same thing. Like if I have a goal I want to achieve, like I want to get to the lake, I need to identify what are the milestones. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. And I, I, I'm like, this is the can really make a difference for, for folks who otherwise wouldn't be able to read or wouldn't have access to this higher level knowledge and being able to apply it. So that's kind of my, my story, how all this came to be. Um, and, uh, and I'm very excited to, you know, along with Todd to, to walk you through what we've come up with and, and hopefully share it with you in a way that, that you get a lot of value out of in, in being able to share with your students. So I'll turn it back over to you, Todd. You would think after two years, I would have learned to unmute my microphone. Um, thanks, Brandon. I, I think that's really one of the things that excited me was also was how in our literacy instru instruction and English language instruction, uh, we are so focused on learning decoding skills, learning reading comprehension skills, learning survival English. And we don't really cover a lot of those things about, uh, you know, goal setting or uh, study skills or just kind of organizing your life so that you can, you know, be more productive, uh, those sorts of things. So uh, that's really what I'm excited about. So what I want to do now is we're going to actually get into what those resources are. We're going to I'm going to show you where to access them on Education Network. They're going to be free and available to everyone. And then uh, we're going to walk you through uh, what Brandon and I kind of came up with as like a model lesson of how you might incorporate them into instruction and the different kind of uh, uh, reading, writing, English language things you might be able to um, uh, do. In your in your class or with your uh, with students, so uh, that's going to require a little bit of uh, participation. So I'm going to ask, uh, I might be asking folks to raise their hand, and uh, uh, so I can call on you and unmute you and ask you to participate. So <clears throat> let's kind of learn first of all what's in um, these resources. So as Brandon said. Uh, what he does basically is he takes a book, uh, a popular book, self-help, uh, personal growth uh, book, and he condenses it down into uh, five videos, basically. Uh, four videos that kind of cover, each one covers a key point, and then there's a, a wrap-up video for the whole series for that week. Um each video is about five minutes long. So not, you know, it, it, it doesn't take up 
uh, the entire class time. It's really, as he said, kind of condensed and to the point. Uh, the videos are accompanied by what he calls a cheat sheet. Uh, it's just kind of a print summary uh, that accompanies the video. Uh, went through and looked at the reading level uh, of a lot of these cheat sheets. They came in at anywhere between a fourth to a seventh grade level. So accessible for a lot of our students, a lot more accessible than the books themselves would be. But I think also, you know, there as a as a print support. Um, and then kind of each video uh, contains an insider secret, each video, each cheat sheet. So kind of each point, there's an insider secret, which is really kind of what is the fundamental nugget of information from that video. And then there's uh, what Brandon calls your challenge today. And that is basically, you see an example of it here, kind of an actionable step that you can take uh, to kind of put this, whatever you learned into action. And I think that's a, uh, that's a really important piece of, of this whole structure that uh, Brandon has uh, created. And then, as I said, kind of, there's four videos, each of them focused on a, a, a different element of the book. And then there's a fifth video that's kind of the insider recap. So if you don't have time to go through uh, the individual lessons, you can kind of use the recap uh, to get an overview, maybe see if you want to dig deeper into uh, the particular lessons. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through uh, uh, kind of an imaginary lesson. This is uh, what we're going to be doing. We're going to be kind of discussing the topic, starting out discussing the topic as we might do. Uh, we're going to take some notes and uh, modify KWL chart. Uh, we're going to watch one of the videos. We're going to read the cheat sheet, and we're going to discuss the challenge and identify some specific actions and uh, things like that. So uh, what I want to do is uh, kind of to get started, the resource that we're going to look at is called the Perfect Day Formula. And the Perfect Day Formula is a book by Craig Ballantyne. It's about 160 pages. Uh, the actual book. And the book is about kind of showing people how they can organize their day to get more done, to be more uh, productive. Uh, so what I did is I kind of took a, a, a tool that's common to us, uh, KWL chart, and modified it a little bit to incorporate some of those things uh, that Brandon has specifically incorporated in his insider school uh, structure, you'll see those last two, what is my challenge and what action will I take? But let's let's just kind of start out as if uh, we're in a, a virtual Zoom class. I've told you what the book is about, The Perfect Day Formula, about how to kind of structure your day uh, to be more productive. Uh, so let's start with that uh, kind of uh, first question. What do I know about this topic? What do I know about being productive. Uh, so what I want you to do is I want you to think about people you know who you would consider successful and um, think about what are some of the things you see them doing uh, that helps them kind of always seem to accomplish what they set out to do. What do they do during the day that helps them uh, be productive? And you can just type your answers into the chat. So instead of actually writing on the KWL, we're going to um, use the chat. And I'm just going to give you a minute or two to, to type some responses in. So I see uh, setting daily goals, creating lists. Oh, Jessica, that's a good one. Putting things first. Don't get distracted by small stuff. Prioritizing, organizing. Okay, great, great. So it seems like we already know something about being productive. We know some folks that we kind of think are productive and have kind of observed 
some of their behavior, some of their habits. All right. Now I want you to think about, oh, go back to my chart. Now I want you to think about yourself. What would you like to learn about so that you can make your day more productive? So this is that, think of this as that second column in that chart. What do you want to learn about to make yourself more productive during your day? Okay. <laughs> Allison, do I have to get up at 7 a.m.? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, how do I prioritize many things going on? Great. So a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of uh, people want to learn about prioritizing. Best time of day for you to do X, Y, or Z. Great. Uh, how to stay focused, how to eliminate distractions. I see a lot. Uh, how to deal with procrastination. Great, great. So now here we are kind of setting some goals for as we get into the video and the cheat sheet. Um, we're setting some goals for things that we uh, want to learn. Okay. Let's move on to the next uh, thing here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to look at now kind of the two main components. So the first one we're going to look at is the video of the perfect day formula. The first video is called the Olympic Sprinter. And I'm going to click on this. And it should take me to the video. And I need to make sure that I share sound. And Brandon, as I start to play this, if you can just let me know that you hear the audio, that would be great. Very great. I want to think back to this morning. What happened? Did you hit snooze on the alarm three or four times? Did you skip breakfast or maybe just scarf some food down? Do you have a plan for how you're going to get through the rest of your day? Have you done the things until this point to make sure that you can go to bed on time. And when you do, you'll have gotten everything you want done. I want you to meet two people. First, meet Joe. He lives a regular life and does what regular people do. He hits snooze, rolls out of bed, goes through his day without a plan, and spends almost the entire day reacting to everything that comes his way. Emails, phone calls, notifications, news, distractions, now, let's meet John. He lives an extraordinary life and does what few people do. He goes to bed on time, wakes up five minutes before his alarm clock, works on his most important work first thing in the morning before checking email or even his phone. He exercises and eats a healthy breakfast in the morning. He finishes projects on time. He spends almost the entire day working with a script, a plan with rules. So what's the difference between Joe and John? Why is one able to live such a profoundly different life than the other? Okay, let's stop there. So uh, you heard uh, Brandon describe two characters, Joe and John, and he talked a little bit about some of the different ways that they uh, start off their day, approach their day. So what are some of the differences between uh, Joe and John, and you can just type your responses uh, in the chat. Okay, one's proactive, one's uh, reactive. One has a plan and sticks to it. Um, excellent, one looks forward to the day, starts a day with a plan, scheduled. Absolutely, uh, prioritizing. Okay, very good. Let's, uh, let's continue on and uh, listen to a little bit more. 
Here's a hint. Paulo Coelho, the author of The Alchemist, said, Discipline and freedom are not mutually exclusive, but mutually dependent, because otherwise you'd sink into chaos. We think that freedom means being able to do what you want, go to sleep when you want, snooze your alarm, get up when you want, check your phone and email whenever you want, watch as much Netflix as you want. That's not freedom. That's living a reactive life, a life reacting to other people's messages, a life reacting to life's distractions, even a life reacting to your own in the moment thoughts and feelings, which can change at any time. So what's the difference between Joe and John? The difference is structure because structure equals freedom. Okay, let's stop right there. Structure equals freedom. What do you think about that statement? And again, just uh, uh, type your responses into the chat. What do you think about that statement? Do you agree with that? Do you disagree with that? Is that a way you've thought about freedom before? Okay, at first it sounds contradictory. A lot of people agree with it, seems very rigid. So some people intrigued by that statement, agree, but hadn't thought about it that way. Okay, okay, good. So so that statement is is kind of prompting some some changes in thought or at least some some curiousness. Good, good. Let's continue on and we'll see what else Brandon has to say. It's kind of like you're an Olympic sprinter and you want to run the 100 meter dash. You can choose to not stay in your lane and run all over the place, or you can choose the structure of the white lines to your left and right and stay inside those lines. Only one of those gives you the freedom to run as fast as you can. So what kind of structure can you add to your life to experience this kind of freedom? Well, Craig Ballantyne says in The Perfect Day Formula that the most important ritual in your life is what time you choose to get out of bed and the best decision you can make is to start getting up 15 minutes earlier. This will allow you to attack your number one priority first thing in the morning. In other words, you get up at least 15 minutes before you otherwise would have, you set a timer and you work on your most important work before doing anything else, before email, before your phone, before meditating or doing yoga. And I'll add, you do this seven days a week. That most important thing could be writing. It could be planning your meetings for the day. It could be working on that big project you've been putting off for months. This sets you up with a win that puts you in a good mood and it helps you build momentum for the day and for your life. Okay, so let's stop there. So Craig Ballantyne in the in the book says that the most important thing, uh, ritual that you can do is get up 15 minutes before you normally would and start working on the most important thing for that day. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> Allison doesn't seem very excited that she has to get up at 7 a.m. Now, Allison, you just have to get up 15 minutes before you normally would. So if that's 10, it's now 945. Okay, so folks, some folks are saying, I don't, I'm not sure if I could do that. Uh, um, others think it is, uh, it's doable. Some folks agree with it, definitely doable. Is that enough time to accomplish anything out of the norm? Good question, good question. Some people say that, uh, say, I start the day a little slowly. So not seeing how working on the most important thing kind of fits with the kind of your normal physiology, I guess, uh, uh, kind of your normal uh, uh, internal clock. Good, good. Okay, so an interesting concept, kind of thinking about how it fits in with your own lifestyle. And let me just say, we did have somebody say, it would be nice if instead of seeing uh, pictures that you saw uh, either me or Brandon 
uh, us on video. We don't use the video of the presenter because we have people all over the country that have different levels of um, internet bandwidth and the video uh, puts a strain on that a lot of times and can cause buffering issues. So I realize it's not as engaging, but it winds up for a smoother webinar if uh, we don't show the presenters webinars or videos. So that's that's why we're not on video. Okay, great. I want to go ahead and um, uh, finish this um, uh, video. You're thinking, but Brandon, 15 minutes isn't enough time. I'd rather just sleep in a little more. And you're right that it's not enough time to make a difference to your sleep, but it's a powerful shift that will impact the next 24 hours that follow, I promise you. So insider secret number one, the Olympic sprinter. Freedom doesn't come from doing whatever you want, it comes from structure. And one of the most powerful structures you can put in place is to get up 15 minutes earlier every day to work on your most important work first thing. Your challenge, think about what the most important work you can do tomorrow is. Commit to setting your alarm 15 minutes earlier and immediately start doing that work. Because the lines on the racetrack of life aren't there to limit you. They're there to give you the freedom to give your life everything you've got. All right. So that was the video. So what I want to do now is go uh, back to our KWL chart and just ask you, from that five minute video, what did you learn? Kind of uh, uh, pick one thing out that you that you learned and type it into the chat. Okay, we've got uh, starting small, structure leads to freedom. I think that uh, really resonated with some people. Just getting up 15 minutes earlier to prioritize uh, can make all the difference. There's a way to approach structure that um, uh, can be positively received by students. Think about what the next most important uh, thing to do on your list for the first 15 minutes, right? Uh, small change can lead to big results. Okay, great, great. So what we would do with students in our class is do the same thing that we've done here is kind of use that. Uh, we might use this uh, adjusted KWL uh, chart to get students to discuss the topic, think about what they already know, what they want to learn, what they did learn. And then we would move on and kind of take up Brandon's challenge, which was uh, to think about um, what's the one thing we want to prioritize for tomorrow and wake up 15 minutes early and do that thing. So kind of think about that. And I'm going to encourage y'all to do that um, uh, tomorrow. So uh, sometime between now and when you go to bed tonight, think about what is that one thing that most important thing for you to accomplish tomorrow, try to get up 15 minutes before you normally would and start to work on that thing. Okay, so now I wanna go to, and here I'm gonna ask for uh, some volunteers. So I'm gonna ask for folks to uh, raise your hand and volunteer. And um, so I need volunteers to uh, do a little bit of reading. And I'm going to make this bigger. And so I'd like a volunteer that I can unmute uh, to read the first uh, two paragraphs of this uh, cheat sheet that goes along with the video. So raise your hand. OK, I've got some volunteers. So I'm going to start with um, Allison. I'm going to allow you to talk. All right, Allison. Uh, if you'll unmute yourself and read those first two uh, paragraphs, please. Paulo Coelho, the author of The Alchemist, said, Discipline and freedom are not mutually exclusive, but mutually dependent, because, because otherwise 
you'd sink into chaos. We think that freedom means being able to do what you want. That's not freedom. That's living a reactive life, a life reacting to other people's messages, a life reacting to life's distractions, even a life reacting to your own in the moment thoughts and feelings, which can change at any time. Okay, great. Now I want you to think about that term reactive life and what that means. That's a term that we heard Brandon use in the uh, 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 video and we just heard it used in the uh, cheat sheet. And I want you to think about your own life and how much time you spend every day reacting versus following a structure or a plan. And just kind of, again, put in the chat percentage percentage reactive versus percentage following a plan. Okay, we've got some people. Um, so 75% plan, 25% reactive, 50-50, 80-20. Some people say most of my day is reactive. Seems like uh, a lot of people, a lot of people feel like they are not spending maybe about 20, 25% of their day uh, reactive. I think that's pretty good. Other folks, maybe are more around uh, 50%. Okay. Okay, so kind of, the, kind of the spectrum. Personally, I feel like uh, maybe some days are more reactive than, than others. Okay, thank you, Allison. And I'm going to mute you, and I'm going to ask Darla uh, to read. Darla, if you will unmute yourself and uh, just read those next three paragraphs. Okay. So what's the difference between a person who lives a regular life and a person who lives an extraordinary life? The difference is structure because structure equals freedom. Craig Ballantine says in the perfect day formula that the most important ritual in your life is what time you choose to get out of bed. And the best decision you can make is to start setting up, I'm sorry, start getting up 15 minutes earlier. This will allow you to attack your number one priority first thing in the morning. Okay, great, great. And I tell you what, I want to make sure we have plenty of time for uh, questions and discussion. So I'm going to stop here, but you guys see how you can use this cheat sheet for uh, reading and then asking questions, checking in for uh, comprehension, and then um, uh, kind of some things like that. Uh, either in an in-person classroom or even in a uh, small group Zoom classroom. Uh, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so just a little bit about some of the things that we've done. Uh, we did some listening comprehension practice, which is very valuable for uh, ESL students, listening to the video and kind of periodically stopping and talking about what we heard, asking what you thought. So we might do this. I, because we have a large group, we did this using the chat. Uh, so some practice with, uh, with writing. Uh, but if we had a smaller group, we might just unmute folks and uh, ask people to chime in and share their uh, thoughts. So we've had a lot of discussion. Uh, we did some uh, comparisons. We talked about the difference between John and Joe, the characters that Brandon introduced early on. We talked a little bit about our thoughts about uh, kind of reactive versus having a structure uh, for our day. Uh, we read, uh, we did some reflection. Specifically, we reflected a little bit on uh, what the word reactive meant. If we had read on down and got to that um, challenge, we would have reflected again on uh, what we would have prioritized for our most important thing and kind of set a, um, uh, put an action behind that. 
Uh, we learned some vocabulary words. Reactive was one of them. And all of this around also gaining some information to help us with some personal growth, help uh, the students that we're working with kind of organize their time. So they might be able to study better. So they might be able to uh, um, just set goals for the day of uh, what they want to work on, where they might uh, learn English, or even, even some of those other things. Our, a lot of our students are you know, business people, they own restaurants, they own uh, businesses. So helping them kind of take this information and applying it to, to those goals, to just being more successful outside of uh, uh, just, you know, learning to read or write or uh, speak English. Um, so let me show you where you're able to access this. And then I'm going to come back and just kind of answer questions and talk about like how you might um, use this in your own classroom. So how are we gonna access, access this? So you can find this on Education Network. Uh, it's in the Insider School subject. So you can use um, uh, Browse All in the Insider School. You can use the search box for the Insider School. And let me just show you what that looks like. So I have signed into Education Network. Uh, and for those of you who are not familiar with Education Network, uh, you can go to proliteracyednet.org. I'm putting that in the chat. Uh, from that page, you can create an account. It's free to create an account. Once you create an account and log in, you'll be on this welcome page. So right now, we have the Insider School resources listed under our feature resources right here. If I click there, I'm gonna see the Insider School resources. If I look down here in the bottom right corner, you'll see the perfect day formula, which is what we were just working from. And if I click on that and open that curriculum, what I'm gonna see is uh, all the lessons uh, for the perfect day formula. So here are the Olympic Sprinter video and cheat sheet. And you see, all I have to do is click launch. And I'm gonna launch that video that we just saw. And I click launch on the cheat sheet. And I'm gonna see that cheat sheet, which is a PDF. And I can click down here or up here in the right-hand corner and download a copy. And then I can distribute it to my students. If we're meeting in person, great. I can distribute that, copy it, uh, give it to everybody in uh, class. So um, later on, if it's not in the featured resources section, you can go up here to browse resources. And if I click on browse all, I'll see the subjects over here on the left. And there's the Insider School right there. And there's all those resources. So that's how you can find them. And again, free to create an account for those of you who um, haven't created an account before on Education Network. And all of these resources are available to you uh, for free. So now what I'd like to do is just have you uh, do, do a couple of things. I want to go back and kind of see folks um, put in the chat, do you think these resources will be useful? Can you use these in your lessons? How would you use them in your lessons? Uh, if you want to type those into the chat, and I am going to uh, kind of start to go through some of the questions that people have uh, put into the uh, Q and A while people are responding to that. How could you use that? The uh, uh, let's see. We have some people have just put responses to the questions we had. Uh, will this be useful for beginner ESL students? Uh, so I think that it will be. Um, I think especially the listening practice 
will be useful. I think the discussion will be useful. Some of the stuff around uh, the cheat sheet and the reading, that might be at too high a level for uh, beginning ESL students. But um, I think certainly the oral work uh, would be good. You can also kind of uh, take this and if you wanted to listen to Brandon's um, kind of summary and uh, put it, in, it into even simpler language uh, to, to kind of share with students, I think you could take that approach as well. So hopefully that, uh, that answered that. And I'd be interested to see if other people thought this would be uh, useful for ESL students as well. Um, let's see. Questions. Okay, question from, uh, it looks like Eileen. How long will the resources be available? So Brandon has made these resources available for free. And let me just say, so he's made seven of his lessons available for free on Education Network. They're going to be available for, I'd say, a good long time. Um, but he has a lot more. He his site actually uh, has a subscription. Uh, so if you take these and find that they are uh, useful to students and you want more, you can actually subscribe. And I'll let Brandon talk a little bit about his subscription model. But these lessons will be on Education Network um, uh, for a while for you to be able to take advantage of them. Brandon, do you want to talk a little bit about your kind of subscription model? Yeah, well, one thing I want to talk about uh, before is actually take one step back about the content of that lesson. Um, hopefully be able to provide value uh, in that way, because I saw a lot of questions in the chat about how to actually take the lesson that we watched, the, uh, the Olympic sprinter, and use it in a very practical sense. And again, the goal of all of this is to take it one step further of, okay, I just learned something cool or something interesting or something that adds to the knowledge that I have. And instead, be like, okay, here's something that I can incorporate into my life and make a part of who I am. And that's really the goal of all of these videos. And that's, to me, the ultimate form of learning. So I just wanted to share a few things with you that I think can be helpful or maybe give you an extra challenge based on, on what was in that video, because I saw a lot of comments about it in the chat. And I see William also asked the question, how do you help your student decide on the priority for the day? How do I decide on your priority each day? And really it's, it's kind of like, um, I guess you can call it deductive reasoning. It's kind of starting with the bigger picture and asking, okay, what is the single, the one thing that will move me towards that bigger picture? So in other words, what is my bigger picture goal? What is the one thing that I'm wanting to move towards in my career or in my work or in my life or whatever it is? And then what is the ideally repeatable activity that will move me towards that one thing? For example, for me, for a long time, that one thing was writing these scripts and reading. So every day, minimum 15 minutes, I'd be writing and reading. And it, it was amazing because like, it felt like these videos and scripts were just like writing themselves. I didn't have to schedule time in the middle of the day. It's just like, I'd wake up, I'd do it and be like, whoa, this is like amazing. It feels effortless. And uh, something that, that I think will be really helpful, uh, I want to offer as a challenge for all of you is kind of like it said in the video to ask yourself, you, you always want to do it the day before, ask, what is that one thing for me tomorrow? And then before you go to bed, set up the structure to make it so that there's minimum amount of time between getting up from bed and actually spending that 15 minutes. So whether if you like to have a glass of water in the morning, have that right by your bed the night before, have your clothes set out the night before, whatever it is. So that way, as soon as possible, you can get up, get that 15 minutes in and then get up, get up uh, for the day. And the real amazing thing about this that you'll find is it's not about the 15 minutes. It's kind of like, you know, when, when kids start to play sports, 
you think what they're really learning about is sports, but that's a head fake, as Randy Posh said. Like, what they're really learning is teamwork, commitment, and all of those things. And the real benefit of this is, yes, you do make progress. But what you're really getting is you're setting up your entire day with an diff entirely different energy of focus and commitment instead of reactivity, instead of the energy of, let me check my phone, let me respond to a text, let me check my email, whatever it is. It it's, it's totally changes everything. And uh, it's, it's what some people would call a keystone habit, one of those habits that then changes a lot of other habits because of its power. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, but anyway, uh, there's, a, there's a total, uh, I guess, uh, detour. So Todd, to ask, answer your question about the, um, the subscription model is, uh, yeah, it's a su subscription. How it works is that uh, I believe that life is like a water bucket. And if you try to fill that bucket up all at once, you'll fail again and again. But if you had a single drop to that bucket today and another drop tomorrow and another drop the day after that, you'll look back in a year with an entirely different life. And that's really the idea of, of uh, the, the membership of, of, of the Insider School is that every day you get a five minute video by 6 a.m. your local time. And it's just a way to start your day with an actionable lesson from a book that you can apply. Everyone has a cheat sheet. Everyone has a challenge like, like we've already gone over. Um, so it's really around that idea of, of that, what I look at as that water bucket and filling it every single day uh, with just another drop. Yeah, and I think the other thing, um, just kind of, again, kind of, and I thought that was, that was great advice, Brandon, about uh, kind of starting with that big picture item and working your way backwards for kind of in this particular case, identifying what's that one thing I want to work on first thing in the morning is starting with that big picture and then working your way back to uh, uh, kind of say this uh, or kind of identify the specific thing you want to work on. But uh, to William's question about how do you help your student decide on their uh, priority for the day. I think one of the nice things about these types of personal growth resources is that you and the student are kind of going through this process together. So I would say it's not so much, um, William, you helping the student decide on their priority, but you and the student kind of having a conversation together and supporting each other on kind of identifying what each of your priorities will be and helping the other one kind of identify what their priority would be and kind of going through this process together. And I think the uh, uh, other piece of it is uh, just kind of recognizing that, you know, just in general, there are a lot of self-help and personal growth books out there. Not all of them make sense for everybody, but, you know, so part of it is also kind of this particular thing that we learned about one is you're still learning a strategy, but then there's that secondary piece of does that strategy really make sense for me and for my uh, for my life uh, kind of thing. So uh, um, I think that's how I would I would think about it. Um, we had a question from Allison about um, are the videos closed caption? Brandon, I didn't notice if they were or not? Uh, it's a good question. I, honestly, I don't, we don't do it. Uh, Vimeo might have that capability, which is where the videos are hosted. Um, but that's something I can get the answer to. I don't, I don't know if, if they are or aren't. Okay. And then Allison has another question about, um, can the videos be, uh, links be, be used with Ednet access? She's thinking about kind of a flipped classroom approach where she might assign a video as homework. Um, Allison, I think you could do that because if you notice, and I'll go back and kind of show this again. So when I click on the perfect day formula, um, and I click on open curriculum, and I start that first video, it's going to launch into a new tab to that Venmeo or Vimeo. Um, uh, a link, and I can just copy that link right there. So if I wanted to assign that to 
uh, students to do as homework, I can copy that link and just give them that link as homework. Or again, you can have your students create education network accounts. And then when they get home, the education network works on phones, tablets, what have you. So you can, during class, help them create their own accounts, show them how to access the resources. And then when they go home, they can uh, access them that way. So either way, I think would work well. And then another question about the recordings is, um, are recordings of pro-literacy webinars posted on the pro-literacy YouTube playlist? Yes. So um, Ellen, this recording, you'll get a link. We'll post it to YouTube, our YouTube channel. You'll get a link set out or, or sent out with the follow-up email next week. But this will also be posted on our webinar playlist. So you'll be able to find it. Um, so I know we're getting close to the uh, top of the hour. So I would encourage anybody that uh, has additional questions to uh, uh, please put those in the Q&A so we can make sure they were answered. We did have a question about, um, Brandon, your website and was this uh, just a promotion for uh, your website? And I'll say, no, this, this was not designed to be a promotion for uh, uh, Brandon's website. Brandon does have a website. It's a subscription website. That's, you know, how he makes a living and we want to be respectful of this. But Brandon was very excited to share these resources with us uh, for free. They're on Education Network for free. We went through and picked out the ones that we thought would be really valuable and really interesting to, uh, to students and to the uh, tutors. And um, Brandon was eager to share those with us and they're gonna be free and available to you without, without a subscription. So uh, the mention of the website is just, if you find that you, uh, you and your student enjoy uh, using these resources in classroom and the student is interested in learning more, it's a, it's a way for you to kind of continue to expand on that. Absolutely. I'll just I'll just add to that, too, that this for me is what I'd call a mission project. And it's not even the main, truthfully, the main work that I do. And, and for me, it's just when I discovered about this problem with Darren, who's uh, who, who was telling me that he couldn't read until seventh grade, I reached out because it was about what can we do to be a part of the solution? And um, and, and yeah, Todd, we work really hard together to identify, okay, what are the seven books? We offered seven books inside uh, there that, that we can make available that we thought would be the most useful. And I'm happy to add even even more that 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 people would find useful as well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I think we're at the top of the hour. I don't see any more questions. So let me just say thank you, Brandon, for um, uh doing this with us for this partnership and thank you everyone for attending. And again, we will uh, send out the follow-up email uh, next week. Okay. We do have uh, one more question. Uh, how can I get my students set up with an education network account? This is a valuable resource for them. Uh, so you can go to proliteracyednet.org. That landing page, you can create an account. The accounts are, are the same for students, for tutors, for everybody. And when you get to that welcome page, once you create an, help them create an account, um, once you get to that welcome page, you can scroll down, show them how to access these resources. So uh, Sonia, I hope that answers your question. We'll put in our summary, we'll put some instructions about creating an education network account as part of that summary that you can use to share uh, with your students as well. But I will say, I, sorry, Brandon, I, I will say, you know, the form is um, not that complicated to fill out. Uh, once, um, once they fill it out and you kind of walk them through how to sign in, where to find the resources, I think they'll be, I think they'll be fine. Go ahead, Brandon. I'll just say, uh, if, if there's anything, if you have any questions along the way, 
or uh, any comments, or even just want to reach out and say hi, uh, would love to connect with you. Um, so I'll, I'll put my email in the chat as well, just brandon at insiderschool.com. Um, feel free to reach out uh, at any time if, if there's any way that I could provide any value. That's great, Brandon. And we'll include that in the uh, summary sheet as well, if that's okay. Of course, yeah. I'll just put it in the chat now. All yeah. right. Thank you so much, everybody. You guys uh, go forth. Have a great uh, rest of the day.